thanks for joining me today. For today's video, I'm going to show you a quick and simple confection. I'm going to show you how to make chocolate rocher. Stick with me to the end as I show you two different ways of making it. Now, you probably all know what Ferrero Rocher is. It's that gold foiled ball that has pastry wafer, creamy chocolate center, hazelnut, and crunchy almond. But I'm gonna show you an equally great confection. So I'm gonna show you what they look like, and I have to show you now because they're quickly diminishing because I have family. And I'm gonna show you a white chocolate version. So I have this more rustic appearance with white chocolate, caramelized almonds, pastry wafer, which is called phaetine, and blueberries, dried blueberries. So it's gonna give you a nice tart, sweet contrasts, as well as the crunchy and crispy textures. I'm also gonna show you another version, same ingredients, but I'm gonna heighten, heighten, heighten? I'm going to heighten the appearance with by using a chocolate mold and giving it a simple technique that's simpler than you think to do. So, pastry crunchy almonds, tart dry blueberries, creamy smooth white chocolate. You can't go wrong. Let's go. Let's start with the almonds. Combine almonds with sugar and triple sec. Give it a stir to combine and place in a hot oven until golden in color for approximately 20 minutes. Give the almonds a stir once or twice during the baking process to control the roasting and color when baking. Allow the almonds to cool, then it's time to chop. I prefer to leave the almonds into nice, large, irregular pieces to offer great texture to the rochers. For the wafer, I'm using a caramelized paper-thin wafer called feuilletine. It is so tasty and addictive, you'll want to eat it right out of the package. I left a link in the description if you want to pick up feuilletine, but you can always substitute and use your favorite cereal. I'm using white chocolate that is crystallized, also known as tempering. Visit my crystallization video here to learn how to do this vital step. You can also substitute the white chocolate for dark, milk, or ruby chocolate if you prefer. If you want to learn more about ruby chocolate, check out my chocolate dipped strawberry video right here. Combine the almonds with crystallized white chocolate, phaetine, and dried blueberries. Fold in the ingredients until it is well coated, being careful not to crush the feuilletine. Spoon the rocher into bite-sized portions and shape into little mounds. You don't need any fancy equipment to make these delectable treats. They still look great and taste awesome. Allow the chocolate to set. Be sure to work in a cool room temperature and low humidity environment when working with chocolate to ensure success. For added elegance, I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful molded version of the Rocher. Using a polycarbonate chocolate mold, smear crystallized dark chocolate into the cavities of the mold with a clean finger. This will create a marbled-like pattern on your bonbon. Next, cast crystallized white chocolate into the mold. Vibrate the mold to release air bubbles and tip the mold over to remove the excess chocolate. Scrape the mold clean and allow it to set. Check out my chocolate peanut butter cup video here as I break down the steps of preparing molded chocolates. Once the chocolate in the mold is set, fill the cavities with your Rocher mixture. Your Rocher mixture should be freshly mixed and fluid at this time for easy filling. Work quickly as the chocolate will want to set. Allow your Rochers to set by placing the mold in the fridge for approximately 10 to 20 minutes. Refrain from leaving the chocolate in the fridge for too long as this will cause sugar bloom and damage the surface of the chocolate. Once the chocolate is set and contracted from the mold, it's time to release. Tap out the chocolates from the mold, being careful not to smash the chocolates that have already released from the mold. Transfer your chocolates onto a tray. Working with cool hands is ideal. 
If you have naturally warm hands, I recommend wearing thin, breathable cotton gloves when handling chocolate to prevent fingerprints from transferring onto the chocolate. Don't these rochet look so elegant? The chocolates are crispy and crunchy from the candied almonds and feuilletine, but also creamy smooth from the chocolate. The dried blueberries are slightly tart, which also complements the sweetness of the white chocolate. These chocolates keep well at cool room temperature for many weeks, if they last that long. Let me know in the comments what your favorite chocolate confection is. Do you like fun and nostalgic chocolate bars or elegant bonbons? I might make it for you in a future video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.